Saint Augustine, the Enriquidian, on the Christian faith, chapter 84 and following. Chapter 84, the resurrection of the body gives rise to numerous questions. Now, as to the resurrection of the body, not a resurrection such as some have had, who came back to life for a time and died again, but a resurrection to eternal life as the body of Christ himself rose again, I do not see how I can discuss the matter briefly and at the same time give a satisfactory answer to all the questions that are ordinarily raised about it. Yet, that the bodies of all men, both those who have been born and those who shall be born, both those who have died and those who shall die, shall be raised again, no Christian ought to have the shadow of a doubt. Chapter 85 The Case of Abortive Conceptions Hence, in the first place arises a question about abortive conceptions which have indeed been born in the mother's womb, but not so born that they could be born again. For if we shall decide that these are to rise again, we can't object to any conclusion that may be drawn in regard to those which are fully formed. Now, who is there that is not rather disposed to think that unformed abortions perish, like seeds that have never fructified? But who will dare to deny, though he may not dare to affirm, that at the resurrection every defect in the form shall be supplied, and that thus the perfection which time would have brought shall not be wanting, any more than the blemishes which time did bring shall be present, so that the nature shall neither want anything suitable and in harmony with it, that length of days would have added, nor be debased by the presence of anything of an opposite kind that length of days has added. But that was it not yet complete shall be completed, just as what has been injured shall be renewed. Chapter 85 If they have ever lived, they must of course have died, and therefore shall have a share in the resurrection of the dead. And therefore the following question may be very carefully inquired into and discussed by learned men, though I do not know whether it is in man's power to resolve it. At what time the infant begins to live in the womb, whether life exists in a latent form before it manifests itself in the motions of the living being. To deny that the young who are cut out limb by limb from the womb, lest if they were left there dead, the mother should die too, have never been alive, seems too audacious. Now, from the time that a man begins to live, from that time it is possible for him to die. And if he die, wheresoever death may overtake him, I can discover on what principle he can be denied an interest in the resurrection of the dead. Chapter 87 The Case of Monstrous Birth We are not justified in affirming even of monstrosities which are born and live, however quickly they may die, that they shall not rise again, nor that they shall rise again in their deformity, and not rather with an amended and perfected body. God forbid that the double-limbed man who was lately born in the East, of whom an account was brought by most trustworthy brethren who had seen him, an account which the presbyter Jerome of blessed memory left in writing. But God forbid, I say, that we should think that at the resurrection there shall be one man with double limbs, and not two distinct men, 
as would have been the case had twins been born. And so are the births which, because they have either a superfluity or a defect, or because they are very much deformed, are called monstrosities, shall at the resurrection be restored to the normal shape of man, and so each single soul shall possess its own body, and no body shall cohere together, even though they were born in cohesion, but each separately shall possess all the members which constitute a complete human body. Chapter 88 The Material Body Never Perishes nor does the earthly material out of which men's mortal bodies are created ever perish. But though it may crumble into dust and ashes, or be dissolved into vapors with exhalations, though it may be transformed into the substance of other bodies, or dispersed into the elements, though it should become food for, bre for beasts or men, and be changed into their flesh, it returns in a moment of time to that human soul which animated it at the first, and which caused it to become man and to live and grow. Chapter 89 But this material may be differently arranged in the resurrection body. And this earthly material, which when the soul leaves it becomes a corpse, shall not at the resurrection be so restored as that the parts into which it is separated, and which under various forms and appearances become parts of other things, though they shall all return to the same body from which they were separated, must necessarily return to the same parts of the body, in which they were originally situated. For otherwise to suppose that the hair recovers all that our frequent clippings and shavings have taken away from it, and the nails all that we have so often paired off, presents to the imagination such a picture of ugliness and deformity as to make the resurrection of the body all but incredible. But just as if a statue of some soluble metal were either melted by fire or broken into dust, or reduced to a shapeless mass, and a sculptor wished to restore it from the same quantity of metal, it would make no difference to the completeness of the work what part of the statue any given particle of the material was put into, as long as the restored statue contained all the material of the original one. So God, the artificer of marvelous and unspeakable power, shall with marvelous and unspeakable rapidity restore our body, using up the whole material of which it, orig it, uh, it originally consisted nor will it affect the completeness of its restoration whether hairs return to hairs and nails to nails, or whether the part of these that had perished be changed into flesh and called to take its place in another part of the body, the great artist taking careful heed that nothing shall be unbecoming or out of place. Chapter 90 if there be differences and inequalities among the bodies of those who rise again, there shall be nothing offensive or disproportionate in any. Nor does it necessarily follow that there shall be differences of stature among those who rise again, because they were of different statures during life. Nor is it certain that the lean shall rise again in their former leanness, and the fat in their former fatness. But if it is a part, but if it is part of the Creator's design, that each should preserve his own peculiarities of features, and retain a recognizable likeness to his former self, while in regard to other bodily advantages all should be equal, 
then the material of which each is composed may be so modified that none of it shall be lost, and that any defect may be supplied by him who can create at his will out of nothing. But if in the bodies of those who rise again there shall be a well-ordered inequality, such as there is in the voices that make up a full harmony, then the material of each man's body shall be so dealt with as that it fo shall form a man fit for the assemblies of the angels, and one who shall bring nothing among them to jar upon their sensibilities. And assuredly nothing that is unseemly shall be there, but whatever shall be there shall be graceful and becoming, for if anything is not seemly, neither shall it be. Chapter 91 The bodies of the saints shall, at the resurrection, be spiritual bodies. The bodies of the saints then shall rise again free from every defect, from every blemish as from all corruption, weight and impediment. For their ease of movement shall be as complete as their happiness, whence their bodies have been called spiritual, thou undoubtedly they shall be bodies and not spirits. For just as now the body is called animate, thou it is a body and not a soul, anima, so then the body shall be called spiritual, though it shall be a body, not a spirit. 1 Corinthians 15.44 Hence, as far as regards the corruption which now weighs down the soul and the vices which urge the flesh to lust against the spirit, see Wisdom 9.15 and Galatians 5.17 it shall not then be flesh but body, for there are bodies which are called celestial. Wherefore it is said, flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God, and as if in explanation of this, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 what the Apostle first called flesh and blood, he afterwards calls corruption, and what he first called the kingdom of God, he afterwards calls incorruption. But as far as regards the substance, even then it shall be flesh. For even after the resurrection, the body of Christ was called flesh. Luke twenty four thirty nine. The Apostle, however, says, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians 15.44 Because so perfect then, he be, then be the harmony between flesh and spirit, the spirit keeping alive the subjugated flesh without the need of any nourishment, that no part of our nature shall be in discord with another. But as we shall be free from enemies without, so we shall not have ourselves for enemies within. Chapter 92 The Resurrection of the Lost But as for those who out of the mass of perdition caused by the first man's sin are not redeemed through the one mediator between God and man, they too shall rise again each with his own body, but only to be punished when the devil and his angels now, whether they shall rise again with all their diseases and deformities of body, bringing with them the diseased and deformed limbs which they possessed here, it would be labor lost to inquire. For we need not weary ourselves speculating about their health or their beauty, which are matters uncertain, when their eternal damnation is a matter of certainty. Nor did we inquire in what sense their body shall be incorruptible, if it be susceptible of pain, or in what sense corruptible, if it be free from the possibility of death. 
for there is no true life except where there is happiness in life, and no true incorruption except where health is unbroken by any pain. When, however, the unhappy are not permitted to die, then, if I may so speak, death itself dies not, and where pain without intermission afflicts the song and never comes to an end, corruption itself is not completed. This is called in Holy Scripture the second death. Revelation 2.2 2. Chapter 93, both the first and the second death are the consequence of sin. Punishment is proportioned to guilt. And neither the first death which takes place when the soul is compelled to leave the body, nor the second death which takes place when the soul is not permitted to leave the suffering body, would have been inflicted on man had no one sinned. And of course, the mildest punishment of all will fall upon those who have added no actual sin to the original sin they brought with them. And as for the rest who have added such actual sins, the punishment of each will be the more terrible in the next world, according as his iniquity has been less in this world. Chapter 94 The saints shall know more fully in the next world the benefits they have received by grace. Thus, when reprobate angels and men are left to endure everlasting punishment, the saints shall know more fully the benefits they have received by grace. Then, in contemplation of the actual facts, they shall see more clearly the meaning of the expression in the Psalms, I will sing of mercy and judgment. Psalm 101 verse 1 for it is only of unmerited mercy that any is redeemed, and only in well-merited judgment that any is condemned. Chapter 95 God's judgments shall then be explained. Then shall be made clear much that is now dark. For example, when of two infants whose cases seem in all respects alike, one by the mercy of God chosen to himself, and the other is by his justice abandoned, wherein the one who is chosen may recognize what was of justice due to himself had not mercy intervened, why of these two the one should have been chosen rather than the other is to us an insoluble problem. And again, why miracles were not wrought in the presence of men who would have repented at the working of the miracles, why they were wrought in the presence of others who, it was known, would not repent. For our Lord says most distinctly, Woe unto thee, Karazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Matthew eleven twenty nine. And assuredly, there was no injustice in God's not willing that they should be saved, though they could have been saved had he so willed it. Then shall be seen, in the clearest light of wisdom, what with the pious is now a faith, though it is not yet a matter of certain knowledge, how sure, how unchangeable, and how effectual is the will of God, how many things he can do which he does not will to do, thou willing nothing which he can perform. And how true is the song of the psalmist, but our God is in the heavens, he hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Psalm 115 verse 3 And this certainly is not true, if God has ever willed anything that he has not performed. And still worse, 
if it was the will of man that hindered the omnipotent from doing what he pleased. Nothing therefore happens but by the will of the omnipotent, he either permitting it to be done or himself doing it. Chapter 96 The Omnipotent God Does Well Even in the Permission of Evil Nor can we doubt that God does well even in the permission of what is evil, for he permits it only in the justice of his judgment. And surely all that is just is good, although, therefore, evil in so far as it is evil is not a good, yet the fact that evil as well as good exists is a good. For if it were not a good that evil should exist, its existence would not be permitted by the omnipotent good, who without doubt can as easily refuse to permit what he does not wish, as bring about what he does wish. And if we do not believe this, the very sentence, the very first sentence of our creed is endangered, wherein we profess to believe in God the Father Almighty, for he is not truly really called Almighty if he can't do whatsoever he pleases, or if the power of his Almighty will is hindered by the will of any creature whatsoever. <laughs>